we are back in it, and after the amazing round that we had last time, yeah, okay, uh, we're gonna put this game to bed, we're gonna finish it, and we are gonna be number one. Now, last time, we talked about prom, and I think these series are gonna be more of a, more of a discussion type series, because what else am I gonna do besides play, like, jump, 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 right? It's gotta be, it's gonna be emotion-filled. That's how you complete anything in life. You wanna find something good in life? Find it, then put emotion and passion behind it, and then, oh, fuck. And then, bam! Takes two attempts and you're and you're already there in life. I don't know. I kind of feel like whether it be passion or emotion, um, anything that you put a lot of commitment to, kind of turns to shit in a while. That's not a negative fashion. Look, I can say the same thing about YouTube. I'm like, I've put a lot of work and commitment into YouTube, and look at it blossom into something that fucks me. Look at it blossom into something that is wonderful, and I never thought it would happen, um, which is great. And at times you get a little shaky and weird because things don't always go your way. And other times, like, this is going phenomenal, this is going more than my way. Um, but what about the things you put a lot of time and commitment into that just want to, like, just stand in your way and just screw you repeatedly because they're hurtful and they don't care and they don't matter? What am I talking about, Internet? I'm talking about friends. Oh, no. No, um, friendship. We all have friendship. Don't you have friendship? Don't you just have that one friend that constantly comes over and you don't really know why you're friends with him and you kind of just like, yeah, he's cool to have around. But you know, like, when times are tough, you can call that friend and he'll be there for you. That's a true friend, right? That's a true friend who will go out of his way to help you, to tell you, like, you know, oh, don't worry, you're beautiful in your prom. <laughs> Fuck! <sighs> you're beautiful in your prom dress, Anthony. You're a very cute girl you know we all have that one friend but that's the one friend we find most disposable right it's the one friend we could be like yeah you know what i don't need you man but that's the friend that ends up being there when you're hurting i should call that friend right now now unfortunately i don't have a friend i have no fucking friends just because i'm a loner i'm, I'm a lone wolf of the pack of society i don't deal with friends now i have friends i think we all have friends whether or not we want to say like we're oh we're an introvert we don't have friends or we're a loner we don't need friends we all need friends we all need that wall that talks back because if you just have a wall that you talk to and it doesn't talk back you're gonna murder someone okay that's how serial killers are born they either play this fucking game or they have no friends all right unless of course you're like a duo serial killer like bonnie and clyde um in which you're each other's best friends best lovers best fuckers and and then you steal the shit together which would be an exciting life i can only imagine fucking on the bank counter while you're robbing them robbing her of her virginity and robbing them of their money it must be exciting we're talking about friends because I have to be honest with you, Aaron. I am awful at making friends. I am a, I'm a shitty person. I'm not a shitty person. Look, if you say you're a shitty person and you start believing you're a shitty person, then you're going to be a shitty person. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, Aaron. If you do something over and... Oh, God! This is a fucking self-fulfilling prophecy. If I keep getting fucked in the ass and keep asking for it, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to keep getting fucked in the ass. And not, it's not going to change. you got to make. You got to be the change you want to be. Don't just say the change you want to be. Be the change you want to be. You know, monkey see, monkey do. Monkey preach, monkey throw poo. It's it's just like that. But no, we all we all kind of feel like, ah, we're not going to make friends, but we're all capable of making friends. Let me tell you, okay? I've been around the block a little bit. Now, I may be older than some of you out there. There are a lot of fucking weirdos out there. So if you happen to be one of those weirdos, well, let me tell you something. There are fucking giant dicks just waiting to get rid of you and dispose of your body. <laughs> <laughs> and make you explode. Now, there are some of those weirdos, but there are a lot of weirdos out there, so you're always fit into a category. But what happens when you find that one weirdo? I'm a weirdo. What happens when you find that one weirdo, and you connect to that one weirdo, and you be that one weirdo, and that one weirdo doesn't want you back, okay? It's just like, you put all this effort and promise, and I wouldn't even, nah, not promise, but you put all this effort and, like, focus on one person, and then just like, man, nah, man, whatever, we had a fucking misunderstanding. We're not cool anymore. Fuck you. And they do should do that to you. And then you're just that's what God, I gotta stop punching a keyboard. It makes no sense. The keyboard does nothing wrong. It's the fucking game. I should punch the developer in the face. Ah. Okay. What was I saying? Yes, when the one friend that you thought was your friend, it turns out they're not really your friend, when they just come over and you talk to them and they tell you, ah, you know, everything's gonna be cool, buddy, then they stab you in the back and they twist that knife. Okay? They twist the fucking knife. That's the worst thing you can do, okay? You might as well just shoot the guy repeatedly until he's dead. Don't twist the knife, because when you twist the knife, guess what? They still live when you twist the knife, okay? You know how many times Julius Caesar was stabbed, okay? He was stabbed like 42 fucking times! You remember? At the Senate, 42 fucking times he was stabbed in the asshole! 42 times! 
okay? That's how many times he was stabbed, and yet, yet he still lived. He lived until the end, enough words to say, eh, to Brute. So obviously, he still had friendship for Brutus, and that Brutus was stabbing him. I bet you, I bet you more money that Brutus is one of those friends who's so fucking committed to his relationships that as, as not Brutus, fuck Brutus, a dick. As Caesar was getting stabbed by Brutus, as Caesar was literally bleeding out, he probably would have started stabbing himself like, is this what you want, Brutus? Is this what you want? And just started stabbing him just to make Brutus happy. Okay? What a dick. And that's the kind of relationships I and friendships I seem to be drawn to. I seem to be drawn to the guy like, it doesn't matter whatever I do in my head, and this is what I fucking hate. This is what makes me fucking mental. What, what I hate. I feel like I'm right 99% of the time. I really do. Which is, which is an awful conceited fucking thing to say. It really... Fuck! It really is a conceited thing to say, okay? Because it's just kind of like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I just, I'm so smart. Everyone's so fucking dumb. Fuck everybody. No, but it's not like that. It, it really isn't, okay? But I just, I feel like when I look at a situation, I'm really good at analyzing a situation and realizing right from wrong. I really am. But then again, in everyone's head, they always think the same fucking thing. So you can look at a problem, the same problem, and get two different answers from two different people who are sure they are right. That's how we got the fucking atomic bomb. No, I don't know why we got the atomic bomb. But that is exactly what happens. So you get two people who think they're giving the same answer to the same problem but i really feel like 99 percent of the time the shit i do in my head makes sense because i really don't have a biased opinion on a lot of things i don't have a lot of moral turpitude pulling me one way or upbringing me bringing me another way and it's just it's just weird so when you when you try and explain this to a friend and you try and like have a rational output and the friend's like nah nah man nah i'm like are you fucking stupid are you and i just want to say it to him but you can't maybe that's where i come off as two point blank when i say that to a friend like are you are you an idiot are you are you fucking dumb because i see something with such clarity and they don't and that just confuses me because I'm just like well then why would I want to <laughs> I hate friends I hate everything god oh I just I don't understand guys I don't I don't get it you put a lot of work into friendships and something and then they just don't care and you try and be reasonable and rational and they just don't care all right I am trying to explain right now a giant miscommunication I'm having with a friend Trying to explain it, doing my best, okay? To the point where they won't even take my calls, or take my messages or anything, and I'm really trying hard to apologize, to explain the, the incompetency on my part, to explain a lot of different things that may have led to a miscommunication, and they just don't even want to deal with it. They're just like, no, no, I'll just cut out the friendship, all done. I'm like, please, you were my one friend. You are the one that I actually was committed to in terms of being a friend, and then we spent a lot of good fucking <laughs> I shouldn't have friends. I have two categories of friendships. I have friendship A and friendship B. And friendship C. We'll throw a C, but C doesn't really count. C is more of an acquaintance, so fuck C. We don't really care about C. No, oh, fuck you two, Block, okay? I'm trying to explain myself. Oh, fuck. What the hell's going on with my Block? So I have two types of friendships, okay? Friendship A, friendship B, and friendship C. C doesn't count, so if you're in C, I'm sorry. It happens, but like, we're friends, but like, you know, I have I have other things. Work is above friendship C, and probably above friendship B. Sometimes above friendship A. Okay, work, fuck, work controls a lot of my life. Maybe that's why I'm shitty with friends. Um, okay, friendship C. This is the friend, like, we're acquaintances, we hang out, we meet, we're cool, you know, we'll talk and everything, and we're gonna have a good time hanging out when we do hang out. But I have a lot of other things that are in my life and I need to work on in order for us to finally be able to hang out. That's friendship C. Friendship B is, we're good friends. We talk. We're, we're, we're buddy buddies. Um, these would be like most of my friends. We're, you're in friendship B category. Fuck you, friendship B category. You're in friendship B. And we'll, we'll play games and we'll do the right thing. It'll be good. Friendship A. This is the friendship tier of friendships that never existed before friendships even existed. This is the Brutus and Caesar friendship. There is at most like two people in this fucking friendship circle at most, which is why it hurts when someone leaves the friendship circle. Okay, it isn't like a trust circle. Or anything. It's a friendship circle. It's more than that. It's like an adoption of each other. And that's what hurts when someone leaves that circle unintentionally or when you don't want them to leave the circle or when you're trying to fucking hold on to them and they just still decide to leave the circle. So friendship A is the circle of all circles. Now, that is like I will take a bullet for you i will i if, even if you're a guy we will date uh, we will have homosex and it was that's the circle that is really hard to get into and once you're in oh man you're in baby you are in like flint and it's just so good to be in and then if you throw that away it hurts so currently what i'm doing i had a friendship a and and i lost friendship a and now i'm trying to rebuild friendship a although they fucking don't want to have it and it's just fucking it's pain man it's pain because no matter what you do it's just fucking committed and no one else can ever be fucking committed i don't know what the hell i'm talking about i think i'm just ranting for the sake of ranting hi internet i'm chill chaos 
Uh, friendships are useless and they're pointless, and I hate them. And uh, yeah, that's that's really it. Now, what happens when work starts getting more absorbed into your life than friendships do? Huh? What happens when that starts occurring? When you become a workaholic? Honestly, I say I love workaholic, okay? Work has never fucked me in the ass. Well, at least not on purpose. It's done it very times inadvertently by like corrupting a file or crashing on me. Maybe work does have a subconscious and it's subconsciously trying to fuck me because we can't be better friends, so maybe it'll think it can escalate our friendship by fucking me, even though by fucking someone technically that would be kind of rape because I don't like the idea of it fucking me because it's my work and we have a platonic relationship in which the two of us are different. That makes sense? That makes sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, okay, okay. Just focus, 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 focus. I just, you know, it's, I'm a hard person to be friends with. I really am. And I totally, I totally get that and understand it. But like, I can be really, really, really committed at times. Like, I can just, I will go and walk and get you bread. If there's bread you desire, I will walk and get you, or ice cream. I... How do we go about fixing our problems, eh? Let's, let's let's talk about that. Well, there are two ways to fix your goddamn friendship problem. One, have no friends, okay? Doesn't matter if you're Brutus, if you're Caesar, if you're Rock Obama. The only way to make sure that you don't get hurt is to have no friends. That is fucking an awful idea. That is an awful fucking idea. <sighs> it's just to make sure you have no friends. And by doing that, of course, you would have no experiences. Yes, you can have solo experiences, and they'll probably be masturbatory experiences, but they are solo experiences. Um, so technically speaking, we're uh, we're on our we're doing solo shots. We're we're pretty much we're pleasing ourselves, which works. But again, you're gonna be having such a limited life experience. Two, two, the way to solve this problem: you just don't talk to them ever again. You have your great experiences; they're your friend day. You're fucking having an amazing time. Your asshole is being touched, and everything's happy. Um, but then after after they leave Friendship A and they go into Friendship D, which is pretty much like fuck you, Friendship D. I don't care if you die. Um, no, I don't have that. But seriously, I probably should adopt that policy. Um, then you just no contact, and it's like they never existed, which is extremely hard to do. Or option C, begging, you know, cry for their acceptance back, which makes you seem like a goddamn punk, and no one wants to be a punk. I don't even know if the punk would be a right word. It makes you seem like a sissy. I don't know. There's always a word that, uh, or not even a word, but like a saying, never put anyone on a pedestal. Okay, you want to know why? Because the you put someone on a pedestal and you're like, oh, look, you're so much greater than me. You have no flaws. The minute you do that, oh, they're going to fucking believe it, man. They're going to fucking believe that they are superior in every goddamn way imaginable. And you know what that means? That means you are fucked from the get-go. Because even if they are a friend, eh, it doesn't matter. They see themselves as a friend fucking you, and it's just fucking done. No, no. So maybe I'm just fucking crazy. Maybe I live in a world where it's a bunch of fucking retarded people and I'm the only fucking same one. Or maybe I'm the fucking retard and a whole bunch of retarded people live with me. Or maybe I'm the retard and everyone else is sane and yet I see things clearly but in the actual world is fucking skewed, okay? I sometimes think that. I sometimes either think that I am the most sane person I know or I am the most retarded person I know. And I can't decipher which is which sometimes because every day my dealings are different. I interact with different people and sometimes it, this shit just seems so obvious. And sometimes it seems so convoluted and complex where it doesn't doesn't fucking matter. We're we're arguing about petty shit and we're discussing petty things and I just for me I'm so passionate about it. I'm like I must be the retard in this situation. And you know what? You know what? Fuck it all! It doesn't fucking mean anything! Oh, it's all fucking worthless. Just go out and enjoy yourself. This fuck man. Let's try and be a good person. That's all you can ask for. That's that's all. And fucking find me a different keyboard. Just be a good person. Well, I'll tell you something here, that once you become a good person, <laughs> expect people to take advantage of that. Because they do. Because people suck.